What are the new two space ports that have been unveiled? How is ISRO making India future space ready with the twin launch pads? And why ISRO is building a new launch pad specifically in Tamil Nadu? India is not building just one but two launch pads. One in Tamil Nadu and one mega pad in Sri Harikota. But why now? And what does it mean for India's space dream? From Gaganyaan to polar orbits to private investment and infrastructure, this is ISRO setting its way up for the whole new era where we are telling the world that we have arrived in the space sector. Hello everyone, welcome to Vajram and Ravi's Flash News. My name is Shubhangi Singh and today we are going to understand the importance of these two launch pads and also get into the understanding that why another launch pad has been made specifically in Tamil Nadu. Now let us start with understanding that what exactly are these two launch pads that we are talking about. The first one is the third launch pad that is coming up at Sri Harikota. Now this is the third one that is being made at Sri Harikota. And second one we are talking, it is basically going to be a space port which is at Kula Shekar Patna in Tamil Nadu. The whole idea behind is to support heavy lift vehicles, human space flights and commercial missions as well. And ISRO is building up these two major facilities so that there is readiness for alignment with India's long term goals be it Gaganyaan mission, be it the Antarik station that we are planning to build up by 2025 or crewed moon mission by 2040. When we look at the first launch pad which is situated at Sri Harikota itself, we see that the specifics that have been brought out recently say that this is going to be the third launch pad at ISRO spaceport which is in Sri Harikota, Andhra Pradesh and then this will be available for launch pad facilities by September 2028 and full readiness will be there by March 2029 and this has been just sanctioned with a massive budget of almost 4000 crores. The significance of this very launch pad is the fact herein we get to see the enablement of specially the next generational launch vehicles which provides the height of 90 meters. Furthermore, the payload capacity is also enhanced up to 30,000 kg when we are talking about specifically the low earth orbit. It will also be used as a standby launch pad for redundancy and it will improve the frequency of launches and the scale of missions which are available with ISRO. And if we further look into the strategic significance of this mega pad that is coming at Sri Harikota, it is specifically been designed for the future human space flight, be it the Gaganyaan mission, be it the crewed moon mission which we are talking about by 2040 and it will also enable the use of semi-cryogenic engines and heavier payload and it will give a direct boost to the make in India integration where we will find that there will be availability of tendering for not just private sector but also for MSMEs and we will also see that we will have our indigenously built capability when we are talking about the space manufacturing ecosystem. So all in all this mega pad, the third launch pad is going to help us not just with low earth orbit mission but till moon that is we are talking about crewed moon mission as well. Now moving towards the second launch pad that we are talking about, it is at Kula Shekhar Patanam in Tamil Nadu and it is at the southern tip of Tamil Nadu. Now the reason which we have to understand that why this specific location has been chosen instead of Sri Harikota, you have to understand because if we were launching from Sri Harikota, especially for South Pole, all the launches in the polar missions, they had to perform a dog leg maneuver. That means the movement couldn't be direct because we did not want to cross the island nation of Sri Lanka. So this dog leg maneuver that is change of the orbit was done 
to reach the South Pole. But when we are talking about this particular space port, that is Kula Shekhar Patinam in southern tip of Tamil Nadu, we are getting that rockets which are launched from here. We will be finding that this maneuver, there is no requirement because there is no landmass which falls in between this particular space. That is why the location is of immense importance here because of this movement, extra movement that was required from Sri Harikota, which needed more fuel and which reduced the payload capacity because of the extra fuel. So, because of the launching from Tamil Nadu, southern tip of Tamil Nadu, there will be further fuel efficiency and there will be scope for more payload in the launches that we are seeing. So the result that we will have will be directly higher payload efficiency and lower cost because of the lower fuel usage as well. Furthermore, if we talk about the specialized purpose for the reason which is it is being built, that it will be utilized for especially small satellite launch vehicles. The rockets from Indian private startups will be launched from here and it will also take up the load from Sri Harikota. That means it will free up Sri Harikota for only large and heavy missions for which we have enabled the TLP as well. Furthermore, as this will facilitate space for especially Indian private space startups, this will be a enabler to private sector growth because we are finding a dedicated infrastructure for agile low cost launches, some sort of commercial or small satellite market and it is also directly facilitating India's rise as a global, especially small satellite hub where we can set an example and we can collaborate with like-minded nations. We can stand with the global south in not just monetary ways, in not just diplomatic ways, but in their growth in terms of space ecosystem as well. Furthermore, we are also going to see that there will be commercial and national impact with this new spaceport launch pad, that it will directly fuel innovation in the new space sector. It will increase the launch cadence without any bottlenecks and usage issues, and it will support strategic autonomy for India in space sector as well as global competitiveness, which is of very much essence given the chaotic global order we are looking at. Now let us try to understand the overall significance of such moves when we are talking such launches and such movement in space sector. The first thing that we get to see is the redundancy. That means there will be safer, better and more reliable launch frequency that we will be seeing in coming time. Furthermore, there will be higher capability. That means more ambitious missions, more scientific and commercial missions can be undertaken and probably successfully executed as well. There will be also facilitation to human space flight readiness, be it we are talking about Gaganyaan, space station, crewed moon mission, etc. It will also facilitate private sector boosts, infrastructure and it will also see betterment in terms of innovation. And the most important one which is required is the self-reliance. When we talk about ISRO, one thing that we get to see that it is a classic example of standing and building on its own in the given limited resources. And at this time, when we are rising to such a stature, we are getting to see that we are getting more confident and we are using the more resources better with better optimum utility. And we are finding a great push towards Atmanirbhar Bharat. Now, I would like to leave you with a question here. One way we are talking, talking about space diplomacy where we are launching missions like NISAR and on other platform we are talking about self-reliance and doing on our own. I would like you to draw comparative analysis that what are the significance of both in their own domains. Now, that was all from my side. Thank you so much.